Okay, okay. So, what we're looking at today are the basics of how dial planning works. Again, dial planning mostly is independent of technology. All the systems have to do the same thing. They have to, you know, figure out a way to route the call. They have to know how to in interpret digits, and they have to use those dig the interpretation of those digits to push the call to where it needs to go. Um, there are differences in syntax between the different manufacturers. There are slightly different approaches to how you accomplish this. We're going to use the ADTRAN way of viewing things because all our equipment in the lab is ADTRAN. They are very, very, very similar. You know, the, di the differences are literally in details of syntax. You know, do I put a comma here? Do I not put a comma here? That sort of thing. In fact, our equipment has differences between older ADRAN equipment and newer ADRAN equipment. The older stuff you have to put, uh, when you show brackets like we were, when we were doing those dial plan things, you have to include the comma. In the newer stuff, you can't include the comma, you know, little things like that. So we'll, we'll deal with those. But what we're talking about today is just what this process actually accomplishes. Now, keep me honest on time, because I'm used to this timing out at 50 minutes, and we've got about 30. So, um, I am also, for this first look at it, going to use the PSTN way of looking at this. Not because it's superior, it's just more straightforward. You know, we have hardware ports that are physically connected on and on, and we'll, we'll deal with the virtual and logical stuff a little bit later, okay? So in this case, we have a, uh, you saw this slide last time, we've got um, an enterprise network that we have to allow these two PBXs to communicate. There's a, tri a private trunk between them. We also route calls out to the PSTN so they can call anybody in the world and anybody in the world can call them. The task for the dial plan, is how do I know when extension 2102 dials 2203, how do the switches know where to route that? And that's what the dial plan accomplishes. In this world, and remember we're using the PSTN type view of the world right now, each of those extensions is connected to a specific port on that switch. Think Ethernet. You know, you have a MAC address on an Ethernet port that uniquely identifies that on a layer two network. Essentially, what you have in a PBX is that same thing. It's just all the interfaces are physically on that PBX, and you're having to uniquely identify each of those. It's called a line equipment number or line number or you know something like that. We'll see it here in a second. I'm going to associate a logical address, our phone numbers with the physical address on this switch. So in other words, I'm going to say this interface, interface A, is addressed with 2103. Again, very much like assigning an IP address to a MAC address. Okay? We're associating the two. The MAC address you can't change, or in, in the original design you couldn't change it. You can change the IP address because that's how we address a network. It's how we make a generic network our own network, right? It's changing the way the addressing works. Basically, what we have to do to accomplish this is very much like routing. If it's on the local network, then I'm, the switch I'm connected to is going to terminate that call. Remember that first question, can I terminate this call? If I can't terminate the call, then I'm going to send it out a trunk connection. Remember that a trunk is a connection between two switches. I can also associate phone numbers, logical addresses, with a trunk interface. So that's basically what I'm showing in this slide. There's some more notes on it, that, but basically that's the outline. So how we do this, inside each of the switches, there is a process called the switchboard. Yep, it, they call it the switchboard because it does precisely what Clotilde did with her plugs. You know, the, it makes cross-point connections between uh, the interfaces. 
So let's assign some numbers here. I've just made up some line, some interface numbers. These are actually usually eight or ten digits long, alpha, alpha and uh, numeric digits <coughs> long. But each of those numbers is a particular physical interface. So what I'm going to do then is go in and I'm going to start creating a dial plan, which means I'm going to create a set of rules and associations. The associations will be for numbers, telephone numbers, associated with particular physical interfaces. So we're going to create something like this. Extension 2101 is connected to port LN10. Okay, so on and so forth. I don't have to read the whole thing to you. Um, you'll notice that each extension, 2101, 2102, 2103, has its own port. Notice the fourth entry. What's that do? Why would I associate something like that with a single interface? What is that pattern 21XX mean? Interpret that for me. Let's interpret the, what is 21 XX, what's the lowest combination of this? 2, 1, 0, 0. What's the highest combination? 2, 1, 9, 9. So what that means is that entire block of 100 numbers is associated with that particular physical interface. This is actually a trick that you see used in uh, business systems. If I have a block of numbers assigned to me and not all of those numbers are given out yet, I'm not using all of them, I'll have the unused numbers go to an operator. So somebody answers the phone. Okay. 22XX um, notices on LN18. What's LN18 connected to? What's on the other end of LN18? Yeah, the PBX for another site. So in other words, instead of listing all of the phones at that other site individually, I'm just listing a rule that just says, if look, if it starts with 2, 2, and is followed by two other digits, whatever they are, send it here. That's all we're doing, OK? It's, all, it's like routing, it's like the IP routing statements. You don't list every IP host that you want to go to on another network. You list the network. It's a similar idea, OK? Um, these are called accept rules, as in the port is allowed to accept this call. The last one, $9 sign, what, interpret that for me in words. What does $9 sign match? Nine followed by anything. Could be nine zero, could be nine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, on and on and on. Okay. What we're, what we're doing is creating a shortcut for anything that's not on our network. It's for off net numbers, and we're going to send them to the PSTN. Nine is called an escape digit. I dial nine, it gets me out of my system, sends it somewhere else. Okay. We're also going to, comp to build something called number complete templates. Now, these look like the same kind of routing rules as we have on the extensions, but they're not. You and I know how long a number is supposed to be. I'm going to say, you know, call me at home, 270-753-5549. We know that pattern. There's that 10-digit thing we're used to. Switches don't know that. You have to tell them what a number is. So what I'm going to do is define when the switch, which is always watching these lines, when the switch receives, starts receiving digits, I'm going to tell it what a complete number looks like. In this case, when I receive two followed by three digits, that's a complete number. Okay? When I see nine followed by two through nine followed by six other digits, that's a complete number. So on and so forth. What do I mean by complete number? It means I can make a routing decision on it. I've, give, I've, I've given the switch enough information now to correctly route that call. You have to be careful with these, particularly in voice over IP systems. One of the real common mistakes 
is to go in and put patterns in the number complete templates thinking that you're putting them on interfaces. Okay? Two things are going on. This is when the switch has enough information to route the call. These are the entries that actually route the call. Okay? We'll get some practice with that. There's not an exact analog to that in IP. Okay? So, the process is, if I pick up a phone and I dial 2102, okay, the first thing we look for, and the first thing a switch looks for, is have I matched one of my number complete templates? Yeah, I have. 2102 matches to XXX as a complete number. Okay? So now the switch knows it can make a routing decision. Okay? Second thing it does is it looks for all of the matches. Okay? And it finds two. LN22 has 2102, and LN10 also matches. Okay? The switch will use the best match. Now, best has a specific meaning here. Best is a specific number of digits or more of a particular pattern matched exactly. Okay? So, nine dollar sign doesn't match this one. If we just had dollar sign up there, dollar sign would also be a match, but it's not a very good one. You know, it matches anything. So we're going to find all the matches, and we're going to pick the most specific one. You, we'll have to get you a little practice figuring out what the most specific match is. Don't worry, we will. Okay. So what we're going to do is route that call to LN22. The switchboard process will say this call needs to go to physical interface LN22, and it'll you know make the connection, and there we go. If I'm going to go to 2202, walk me through the process. What's the first thing that has to happen? Right. Number complete template so the switch knows that it has enough information to route a call. What's the next thing? We're going to find all the matches on the switch. In this case, there is only one. From that switch's point of view, there's only one place to send that call. So that's automatically the best match. And we're going to send the call out. Okay? That's it. Okay, like most things that are real simple, this can get really horrendous in the details. For example, I'll guarantee you at least half of you in here, even after I say this, will do the following. You'll create a number complete template, and you'll plug in, say we're doing four-digit dialing, and you're going to put a number complete template of XXXX. Great, four digits, right? And it matches any of them. Okay. On this same switch, I'm going to tell you to dial nine and seven digits to get an outside line and make a local call. What's going to happen when you dial nine, seven, five, three? Because XXXX matches any four digits, and guess what? You just gave it four digits, so it's going to make a routing decision. Guarantee it'll happen. That's, that's actually a real common error. You get so intent on trying to match patterns that you forget that that's a pretty broad pattern. <laughs> so we'll, that's why we're going to practice these a good bit. Now, sometimes we want to prevent a call from going through a port. Accept rules do just that. They accept a call. They allow it through a port. One thing to note, I'm, I said dollar sign is not a very good match, but it is a match. Okay. If there is not a match at all, the call doesn't go anywhere. Now that sounds that sounds obvious, but when you're used to dealing with Ethernet, you know, you can generally just kind of throw stuff out on a network and something will happen if there's any kind of addressing at all. Not in this world. If you don't have a match of some type, the call doesn't move. Okay. Dollar sign is there to provide very broad matches. We're going to try to hone them down more and more as we go. Okay. Sometimes, though, 
we want to prevent a call from going through a port. What, what, when would I want to prevent a call from going through a port? Can you think of an example? You ever seen a hotel phone in the lobby? You ever tried to make a long distance call on it? I don't want to make, I, I'm a hotel owner, I don't want you to be able to walk in my lobby and make long distance calls. It's going to cost me money. So I'm going to prevent that call, that particular ex interface, from making long distance calls. What we're doing are creating reject rules. And these work similar to firewall rules. They are interface specific. You use them when you want to, the only time you use rejects are when you want to stop a call that would otherwise go through that interface. I'll give you an example. On port LN10, I don't want long distance to go. Now, look at my number complete templates over here. I have a number complete template for long distance. Nine, getting outside lines the way I, this switch is built up. One for long distance, area code, exchange, and four digits. So I allow long distance. Since this phone, maybe that's a lobby phone or something, I don't want that phone to be able to make long distance calls. On this interface, I'm going to create an inter, uh, a matching rule that matches, excuse me, nine one dollar sign. If you interpret this in words, anything that begins with nine one followed by any number of digits, I'm going to block. So I've just blocked long distance on that port. What if I wanted to prevent everybody from dialing long distance for some reason? Where would I put this rule? I could put it on everybody's individual port. That's going to take a long time. I could put it here, and that'll block everybody. But it'll block everybody. So you <laughs> you got to keep in mind what you're doing. These kind of relationships and thinking what you want calls to do are the trick in dial planning. You have to you can't just sit down and start putting things in. You can, but it doesn't last very long. You need to think through how, what you want calls to do, build a dial plan that lets you separate call types, and then write rules to match those call types and either reject or pass them. That's ba the, the basic approach. So let's see how this would work. Same kind of thing from LN10. Since that's the port we put this reject on, I'm going to dial 91. 909-785-2351. Actually, that's wrong. It doesn't match the 2XXX. It matches 91X. Sorry about that. So I get a match. It says LN10, but since I have a reject, that call is put away. Rejects always override accepts, period. If you have a an accept, and you have a reject, the reject wins, okay? Now, if we do that same call from LN22, and again, I'm sorry, I've got 2XXX as the number complete template that matches. Obviously, it's the 9-1 long distance one. It matches, and on LN17, the call will go out. LN22 down here doesn't have the reject rule, so that call is allowed to go through. Okay? So the only change I've made is rejecting on LN10. Okay? Pretty straightforward. So let's practice a little bit. Some of this is pretty similar to what you did on the exercise. 4400 through 4499, okay? How would, I've got the answers up there, but how do you do that? Here's the way I would suggest you get in the habit of doing it. It looks like a math problem, it's really not. When I give you a range like that, 4400, 
to spread it out a little bit. Always oh, make that too close to see. Four, four, zero, zero, through four, four, nine, nine. What we're going to do is just look at the range for each of these digit places. Remember, this is a pattern. Okay. What's the range here? 4 to 4. So the only way I have to write that rule is just 4. Okay. Similar, 4 to 4. What's the range here? Okay. 0 to 9. And now just write what you have. 4 is 4. 4 is 4. What's 0 to 9? X, there you go, there's your rule, okay? Second one I'll let you look through when you're looking at the notes. Let me go through the third one with you. It is really important, and probably the most broken rule that when you're specifying ranges, particularly if you're dealing with publicly assigned numbers, I'm defining numbers, you're going to learn a term called DIDs, direct inward dials. These are public numbers assigned to your network. Okay? It's really important that you, ex you specify exactly the range you're assigned. Okay? Here's why. You're at work. Let's say your company has one... 1 XX, okay? So 1100 through 1199. And you really want, let's see, actually let me, let me, use, a let me use a different range to make a point here. Let's say your company has 11567X. Okay, so 1150 through 1179. Okay. But it's late. You want to get home. Does that match all my numbers? Yeah. It'll pass every bit of this. Great. Later on, you want to dial home. And we'll pretend for a second that home, you can dial four digits in this town. I didn't want to mess with seven. Okay? Your home number is 1110. Can you get there? No, because this system sees your home number as, a, as its internal number. So you have to specify these ranges exactly. I'll get you practice on that. But... The reason I show you that short piece is because that's where we end up with in the third rule. I refer to these, and I will continue. Yes, sir? That would work for a template. It would not work for a match rule, yes. So I would see that the template as a Right. Remember, you've got two things going on. You've got template. That's when I make a routing decision. And you've got accept rules. The accept rules need to precisely match the range that you're assigned. Okay. One 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 zero. If you did, if you if you set the accept rule the lazy way I showed you of one one xx, you would. Yeah. Okay. I've actually got a problem that we're going to set up in the lab that will do exactly this. Okay. I refer to these as rules, but sometimes you have to use more than one rule to, to match an entire range, and that's what this third one does. Four, four, zero, zero, what did I use? Four, 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 five, four, five. Four, five, four, five. Okay. Range here is four. Here it's four or five. Here it's zero through four. Here it is zero through five. Okay. 
So how do I do that? Well, the first one everybody wants to try is just say, oh, well, just set the range. Four, four, five, zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Looks, looks fine. Let me ask you this. With this as an accept rule, can I dial 4475, which is in my range, right? That's a number that is in my real range. No, I can't. 4, that matches. 4 matches. 7, can't do it because you didn't specify the range. Anytime you get, end up with what looks like, where it looks like you ought to have multiple sets of brackets, you're going to have, to have multiple rules. You can only have one set of brackets in a rule. Okay? So what we're going to do is just break this into pieces. The first one, 4400, zero, zero, we can actually do a big chunk of this if you like. 4400, zero, zero, we can do 4, 4, X, X, okay? What does that give me? 4400 four, zero, zero, through 4499, four, okay? That leaves me 45 and everything following, okay? So I can do 45. What would the third digit place be? I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. well, what do I put in the last one? I've walked you down the trail. I can put good good catch. If I do that, it works, right? Do I exactly match my range? No, I've got extra numbers in there that I don't need to match because my range ends at 4 or 5. Okay, so what we're going to do is only match 0, 1, 2, 3, X. Okay, what's the range of these? 4, 5, 0, 0, through 4, 5, 3, 9. Okay, now I lack those last few numbers, so that'll be four, five, four, okay, zero, don't forget zero, one, two, three, four, and five. And that'll be four, five, four, zero, through four, five, Four, five. Here's our range. I'm sorry, wrong place. That's what I meant about things getting complex even with simple rules. Okay. If I'm going to build the accept rules, I'm going to have to do this. What would I? What could I use for a number complete template? on this. There are a couple of three ways you can do it. What's one? What does a number complete template do? Tells the switch that it has enough information to make a routing decision, right? Okay. So we just need to be able to tell the switch that this is complete. I could use one way to do it would be number complete. How are we on time? Okay, good. Number complete template, I could, one way to do it would be 4XXX. Now, this you have to decide in context, and I haven't given you enough context 
to choose between these options. This matches, right? Four followed by three digits. If nothing else in my system matches that, then we're good. If I need to be more specific, I can do a number complete that is four, four, five, XX. I probably don't need to be any more specific than that, okay? You'll also see people that prefer to do these as separate entries. So you might see 4, 4, X, X, and 4, 5, X, X as a group. Any of those would work for number complete templates. Number complete templates tell the switch when the number, when it has received enough information and then it matches the number to the accept rules. Okay. We'll get some practice on doing this. I have, uh, this is what I was going to do the last part. Obviously, we're not going to get through this in one minute. When we come in Wednesday, we'll start right here. Please review this so that you understand the following when we start class. We're going to, to build for each of these three sites, we're going to build a number complete template list and a set of accept rules on these interfaces. Okay? So be sure you understand the routing process, how you configure number complete templates and accept rules well enough to follow that discussion. This will take us the whole period to get through most of it. Okay? You're going to have homework of something similar to this after Wednesday. Okay? Be safe, guys.